Bitter the knowledge we glean from Drow, thus spoke the poet. All right, hello everybody and welcome back to Evil Twin. We last left off, we had basically landed the plane in at the Evil Master's Tower, Lauren Dareth. We have the zip it, which is the big key, to enter, and we are about to, uh, I guess, do the final level? Final boss battle? I don't know. Before I go in, I want to, uh, yeah, the Dave's weapon. So let's, uh, go ahead and head on over. That's the wrong button. This one. Sorry, they're starting to meld in my head a little. Uh, let's go back to the Demi Island, the Demi Village, and uh, check out our new weapon. Our ammo type, whatever. It's like a buckle or a shield or something. I have to say, um... Going to the big evil final level and then before you enter the final level you just bail back to the first area of the game. It's kind of an it kind of hurts the build up a little. I wouldn't say it's full on anticlimactic because it's not finalized, but it's definitely wind out of the sails a bit. Over here, yeah. Look at that. The door leads to the Protection Force training. Ooh. Actually, that's probably vital, I figure out. <laughs> All of our ammo usage has been pretty solid in terms of puzzling and stuff. I'm sorry, what are those? Okay, the mayor has definitely forgot the past. He can barely recognize me. Right, so that much is done. In any case, you shouldn't have to come back here. As for Dave's attack, well, <laughs> it's not really an attack. It's more of a protection, a force generator to be precise. Like just about all your weapons, this one can be used in two ways. For example, let's imagine you're stuck by a lake of lava, acid, or some other deadly zone. Well, if you use Dave's ammunition to shoot at this zone, it creates a platform. You can thus cross the zone without too much difficulty. But be careful, the platforms are temporary. So when you use this weapon, don't hang around admiring the scenery, okay? Okay. Right. Now, imagine you enter a room full of enemies, or with a protection system that will disintegrate you as soon as you set foot in the room. Here again, you can use Dave's attack. But this time, instead of making a platform, it makes a ball wherever you shoot. The idea is to jump into the ball for protection. Here again, the balls are temporary. And besides, they're not mobile. This means that when you're inside a ball, you can do nothing else except wait for the danger to pass or move far enough away for you to come out. Got it? I think so, yeah. Good. So, initially, you should just test the first use of your weapon uh, in other words, the platforms. After that, you can test the second use. As for me, I'll see you further on. Good luck. I've noticed something with the dialogue. The dub's timing has been pretty... pretty one-to-one -one with the French so far, and I don't know if that's the case still, because there's many sections that have been cut off or they're talking and no words are coming out for like a solid second. Um, I'm sure you've noticed. I don't, I, I don't know if that's like the dub losing, you know, like quality or if the French version also did that. It does seem pretty weird because it was pretty, pretty good on that previously, but all of a sudden it's, it's having that issue. Look, a face. Okay, so what is this? Ooh. Oh great, vomit land. Okay. 
So, something about temporary platforms and then... It creates a bubble. Oh, okay, so it creates a bubble and I can stand on it or walk into it. I'm not sure what that... How did... How does it know which one I want, though? Okay. Let's do this. <laughs> What's happening? Uh, I've discovered a problem. Oh, there it goes. Think so. It's like it won't let me. Oh no. Sip, please. Why? Sip, why? <laughs> no! Fuck you! I'm gonna lose all my lives in this stupid tutorial! I get it. Those hold the platform. They're not meant to be the platform itself. Okay. I may restart after this just so uh, I don't lose all these lives because it's not like I need to figure out how to use the thing, obviously. But if it's gonna cost me lives, I need for the for the the final level. So this is the same thing, but as, like, protection, right? So basically, if I hit the ground, it becomes a temporary shield rather than... Oh, no. good, but you gotta give me some in order for me to do this correctly. There we go. Figure out where I'm supposed to go. That didn't work, but whatever. No, but 
whatever. I now know how to use it, and they gave me most of my lives back. I don't care at this point. Let's, uh, it says go and see the mayor. We'll try, but, you know, it's, it's never worked, literally ever, as an exception being the first one. So I guess it worked like the one time it was required and literally none of the times it's been optional. Yo. For some reason, I can't even change my ammo when up here. Like it's all completely broken the moment I get here. All right, back to Lauren Dark. Yeah. Okay. Y'all ready? I have no ammo. Yeah, y'all. Okay, deep breath, everyone. We got this. We got this. Woo! Say camera. <laughs> this is interesting. I don't need any of the bears. Whoop. Bitter the knowledge we glean from Drow, thus spoke the poet. I don't think I need to introduce myself, young Cyprian. Here we are, face to face, divided by hatred. Two beings alone looking at each other for the first time. And yet, they have the strange sensation that their whole life was nothing but a long road leading to this moment, this place. They have traveled without seeing each other, but when they see each other, when the time has come, they have nothing to say to each other. Words are obsolete, language unnecessary. It could be love, but in fact, it is war that speaks through their eyes. War and fear also, the fear of dying, no doubt. But most of all, the fear of knowing that at the end of the combat, they will both be dead. One of them because he no longer lives, and the other because he no longer wants to live. So take me out, young Cyprian. That's what you came for. Take me out and discover through blood who you really are. Here we go to save the day. What's happening? Uh, I don't remember all of Super Sip's abilities because I'm too worried about him losing his power. Yeah, I can speed this through. Whoosh. Whee! Uh, I 
don't know what I'm doing. Uh. Did I do it? Ow! Bitch! I think I, if I remember, I'm invincible when I do the sonic rush thing. Are you gonna hit me? Give me a sec. Nah! You shall not take me, Satan! Okay, am I might even close to doing this right? Oh wait, I already cut off one of his tendril things. Little whippies. Let me get another whippy. It's got like, what is it, a tail? I don't want to, you know what, in hindsight, I don't want to know what they are. He had four of them, now he has three. Take one more hit. Did I finally get it? Yay! That's it? No way, that's it. Wait, what? What? The death of the hero. The despair of his friend. Poor child who thought himself so strong, able to face up to the world. But he still hasn't understood that it is not the world he faces today. You're not gonna bore me for long with your idiotic monologue. And what are you planning to do, hmm? And the show goes on. Good enough. Okay. So what are we doing? What are we doing? Uh, there's scythe guy right there and stuff like Oh no. Okay, I can go up here and get some bubblegum ammo. <laughs> Why? Stop killing me. No. I need to live in order 
order to live. Huh. Huh. I don't know why I'm doing this. Uh, where, where? Oh, shit, no. Don't even know where you're firing. Okay. So, now I got some gum. I got some gum. Like a leaf thing? There's a leaf thing right there? No. Yeah! Ow! Okay, so wait, there's a leaf thing. Yeah, I bet I gotta hit, like, that guy all the way over there. Can I hit him? Yay! I'm gonna get hit with fucking everything, though. Yep, there it is. Damn it. This is a weirdly, like, quiet sec section compared to the previous one. There we go. Quickly now, quickly! That's cheating and you know it. Acorn ammo. Hello. Ah, come on. Nice. Okay. You rotating fucking pyre? <laughs> okay, hold up. Um, these appear to be faces. Which face I need? Do I need to hit them with the correct ammo? Uh, while I'm up here, I'm just collecting a bunch more of these. Um... Should I say that now that I collected them, where do I use them? There's another vent right here. That's the thing. Nice. Oh, I misjudged that, but that's fine. Okay. Ha <laughs> 
Can I get there? Come on. Faster, you bitch. Faster, you dumb bitch. Whoa, it worked! Yeah! I didn't know he had to be underneath, though. I was just afraid he was going to attack me, and I knew he was blocked from that angle. So wait, this stays? As long as I'm in uh, the airplane. That's good to know. I think I need to head to the one he's underneath. Oh, but it takes so fucking long. I'm here. Uh, uh, hit it. Yeah! Eat shit, shit lord. One more to go. It's really far away, though. <laughs> I don't know if this is the correct timing, but... Radioactive away. Oh God, my eyes! Ah! Why? with all your imaginary garbage, your stupid games, and your cheap wisdom. I'm grown up now, and it's time to move on to other things. That's why I, Cyprian, king of my imagination, condemn your world to oblivion. Who spoke these words? Oh yes, Cyprian. By speaking these few sentences, you made yourself responsible for all the misfortune that has befallen Underbed. Welcome home, Cyprian. No! What do you mean, no? Something like... Drop dead. It would be more powerful if Cyprian was not voiced by a 15-year-old. <laughs> they, got, they got out the Bob Wire, guys. That's how you know it's serious. I can't see what I'm doing. Oh, that's on fire. That sounds like some angry horses, but not in a fun way. Ugh. I don't even... What am I doing? I hit you a bunch. Look at me hitting you a bunch. Ow. Hold up. When did you get to decide that? What? It's a one-hit insta-kill? Oh. oh, hold up. What 
whatever gets shot catches fire, including when I shoot it. Okay. I can make this work, I think. I just gotta... Did he get him? Whoop! Whoop! Hey, wait. Do I just... No, wait. <laughs> I stocked up, bitch! Yeah, this is really slow. No, don't! Stop it! That count? I don't think it did. I don't think that counted. I'm about to get flamed. Okay, I'm gonna just... Did that count? No. Okay. I think he's overthrowing. Like, he's trying to get me, but can't. There it goes. The heck? All right, Pip. We're waiting for you. Yeah. What are you waiting for? I'm hungry. Uh, you're waiting for me? Vinny? What? You've been screwing around again, Vinny. Yeah, you've been putting plants in the orange juice to make us sleep. And you know what happens when you put substances that make us stupid in the orange juice. Uh... It makes us stupid? Shit! You're really unfrightenable! Does that word exist? Who knows? Anyway, Sip, your birthday party's tonight only. So start panicking if you know what's good for you. No, wait! There's no now nah wait about it. Besides... Must I remind you of your date? What? Oh, yeah. We got you a girl for the evening. Who? You don't want to know. Yes, I do. Tell me who she is. You'll see. Come on. Hey, Vince. Did you see his toys? Wow. That's new. Well, it's his birthday. It's only natural. It bites anyway. Are we going? We're gone. Hey, Vince, did you really put something in his orange juice? Well... Okay, everybody, we can go now. Okay, wake up, everybody. We're going home. Vote Captain, you take the controls. I'll join you. You're on. Okay, everybody out. We're heading for Underbed. Oh, Lenny, old chum. Tell me what you're doing the weekend after next. Nothing special. What would you say to a round of Spike the Turnip between gentlemen? Well, then, I'll see if I'm free. Well, Doctor, I don't want to shock you, but it might be time to think about going home. Oops. <laughs> yes, very true. My respects, Lenny. And all the best to Cyprian. I won't forget, Doctor. Thanks. Come on, you know you can count on me. Will you be all right? We missed the worst. I think the rest should be okay. Right. Anyway, you know where to contact me. Don't worry. Right. Well then, see you later. See you later. You're sure you'll be okay? Of course I'm fine. Go on, go away, you lazy sod. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. <sighs> 
what a day. Okay, I have thoughts. Um, if they really had just had a high adventure, I think that would have possibly been the worst ending possible for this game. Literally, the worst. It would have been better if it was just a straight up dream, because then you could do the, the Mary Kim McGee's Alice approach. Thankfully, it does seem they bailed on that, so good. Mundabed appears to be a real place in this universe, which, yeah. Oh yeah, the website mentioned this. They censored one of the things that they credited. Forgot the details. Anyway, um, check out that website I talked about in the first episode. It really is cool. Um, I'll definitely be using it as a major resource when I do a review of this properly. And yes, it is. I have officially decided I'm going to review this properly. Um, I'm going to do American McGee's Alice and its sequel first because those are the first one is literally my favorite game. Um, but I, I, I definitely want to recover this shortly after that. So, um, I very much enjoyed this. It's very interesting and unique, and I would have ate this up if I could as a kid, but from what I gather, it never- Oh yeah, there's another one censored, look at that! From what I gather, it never went to the US, and even if it did, I didn't have a PlayStation or a Dreamcast, and so I guess I- I guess I could have played the PC version, but again, it never went to the US at all, so... Eh. Um... But yeah, I very much enjoyed this. Hello, pre-evil Ubi Space Soft. Uh, <laughs> that's- that's so weird to see in hindsight. Wow! Uh, <laughs> uh, back before they were evil Ubisoft, wow! <laughs> Last I checked, they were uh, having a black samurai murder a bunch of Japanese people, pissing off the actual Japanese, so... Uh, they ain't doing too hot right now. <laughs> Um, but, uh, I, I very much enjoyed this. This was a lot of fun. I cannot wait to explore the little questions I have about it and stuff, uh, when I come back to it for the review. Um, this, this was just an absolute joy, and... The only, the only reason why it took me so long to record it is because I'm just really busy at the moment, and this game is surprisingly high stress. Um, every once in a while I play a game that I- it, it's independent of my actual enjoyment, but for some reason every once in a while I'll play a game that's just really stressful on me, and this was one of them for some reason. Um, it definitely equaled that out by being absolutely great in terms of my preferred aesthetics and such. I will say I'm not a fan of how often we just have machinery and stuff. Both the, uh, folk boat and the flyers blimp had very similar aesthetic, and so we ended up spending a lot of time- Oh, and the- the factory. We- we ended up spending a surprisingly large amount of time in just general industrial areas, and that's not my cup of tea, so if I had to complain, that's where I would complain. That in mind, um, I think this was very solid. I would've ate this up, uh, during my McGee's Alice, um, when that was still fresh and all that, so. Uh, it, it's a real shame I couldn't at the time. So, um, I, I, I just, I, I can't, I think I've, exp I think this was exactly what I was expecting it to be, which is a positive, I assure you. Um, I do hear, I do think I'll probably end up replaying the different versions of this game, the different ports. Because apparently, uh, I'm missing some cutscenes for... And I guess the best way to do that would probably be PlayStation 2 emulated. Uh, but apparently the Dreamcast version is probably the most popular port. But it's also missing sections? I don't know. Um, I'll replay this game probably 
one or two more times when I do the review, just for comparison's sake. But but for now, for now, I think we're 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 pretty settled. Um, this game was gonna get a sequel, but apparently that got canceled. Um, one of the, according to that website from the first episode, one of the inspirations for this game was a game called Malice. And I actually knew of the game as a kid. I tried really hard to research it during my early uh, game hunting days. I wasn't as many, I didn't have as much experience or resources back then in order to hunt down obscure games. So I ended up giving up on Al Ma sorry, Malice um, at the time. And seeing that on the website um, as one of the possible inspirations, I, I kind of am interested in hunting that down again. I haven't looked into it properly. Maybe I'll look at it and I'll be like, oh no, that that's nothing like I was wanting. Um, but I think that will be probably my next step in this particular line of this type of game. I did mention it previously that I own um, Lost in Random, and that is in this genre of aesthetic. I think... But it's definitely leaning to way more towards uh, Madness Returns visuals versus McGee's Alice visuals. And not just in terms of technology, just in general tone and feel. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to that. A little hesitant on it. Um, it it'll, that will definitely wait until after I'm done with the director's cut of McGee's... Of Madness Returns, sorry. Of Madness Returns. Um, if you liked this, I'm glad I was able to showcase it, because apparently this game is mostly forgotten, especially in the English-speaking world, so I'm, I'm very glad I got to play this, and yeah, I think, I think we're done there for today. Um, obviously there's cheat codes and stuff, uh, I'll, I'll be exploring that for the review, but for this playthrough, I think we're pretty pretty solidly done so i guess i'll call it there for today thank you guys so much for coming by please join me next time i love you and bye bye